One of the funniest things that happens in life is how people behave. People like to put on a persona and act like something that they're not. Why? Because it's cool, because it's trendy, because they'll get the attention. Everybody wants to use the word demure when they don't even know that that was a word that existed prior to it just appearing on social media. People want to do handstands and handstand push-ups because it's trendy in the fitness community in today's day and age. People want to be on boats at the river, at the lake. They want to be cool. They want to, they want to be part of the cool kids club, Austin. And to that, I say that's complete and utter disgusting bullshit. But what are your two cents on this? So, I believe I heard this before, but I will give people some, I'll cut them some slack here. Slightly before I go on to my rant and tell them how they suck. But um, I do think there is a biological reason for why people do this. Normally, in times of peril, when we had to hunt for our own food and whatnot. If you were alone, it would be a lot harder for you to hunt, harder for you to survive, harder for you to pass your genes down the line because you're by yourself. So what would you do? You would conform. You would get with people, a group of people, and how they were doing things, that's how you would do, it, do things. How they would dress, that's how you would dress. How they would hunt, that's how you would hunt. Because if you strayed outside of that, you, may, you might get ostracized, you might get cast out, and then you'd have to survive on your own, which would be very, very difficult about that, uh, back then. And nowadays, though we don't have as you know bad circumstances, or dire circumstances, we still have that same innate instinct within us to be a part of a tribe, be a part of a group, so that we can survive and pass our genes down. Because more often than not, if you were someone who was unique and someone who didn't want to conform, the odds of you surviving were slim to none. So I understand that part. But you have to start thinking of things as, instead of that way, sheep and wolves. There's a lot of sheep out there. The shepherd has a lot of sheep that he's guiding, right? And they're wolves. They stray out. Of course, they have their pack, but they do their own thing. They're not as big of a group, but they're very good at what they do. People might say, oh, shit, no, let's stay away from the wolves. They're over there doing wolf shit, you know? Let's stay over here with the sheep. It seems kind of dangerous over there. I don't want to go over there with them. You might say that. However, the ones who succeed the most, the ones who are at the top of the food chain, especially in that kind of situation, are the wolves. They're not sheep. They don't just follow the leader. They don't just follow the shepherd. They don't just follow what's popular on social media. They do what they want to do. They hunt how they want to hunt. They feed how they want to feed. And that's what people I feel like have lost nowadays. They don't understand that if you want to be something, if you want to be something other than a sheep, you want to be a wolf, you're going to have to stray out of the herd and do things, experiment things, and, oh, I don't know, be your fucking self. Because before we got to, I don't know, kindergarten, pre-K, first grade, whatever the fuck, you had a, a personality that probably got dimmed. Why? Because once you got in those areas, once you got in those environments, maybe you did something odd, maybe you ate a little weird, maybe you dressed a little weird, maybe you talked a little weird. You might have got criticized, you might have got ostracized, and it taught you in order to not get bullied, in order to not get ridiculed, I'm going to have to conform. But when I ask you, who are you? Who are you really? Think back to that little kid that you were. How did you do things? What did you like to do? How did you enjoy life? Now, of course, hopefully you've grown, you matured, but 
during that time, I'd say that was your freest mind state because you had no restrictions set upon you by society just yet before you got into those classrooms, before you got into those environments where people told you to be a certain way. So I would say, look back and think about who you were as a person during those times and try to utilize that today because the people who stand out are normally the ones who were okay with not conforming. They were okay with being their selves. And those are the people that we look up to, or not necessarily me, but people in general look up to. People look up to the people who didn't conform, which is crazy to me because instead of saying, hey, I'm going to follow their footsteps, you say, no, I'm going to conform and do what's cool and just follow the trend. You're not going to say, oh, shit, well, he did his own thing. I want to do my own thing and figure out what works for me. And you're going to say, oh, shit, no, I'm just going to copy exactly what everybody else is fucking doing because it's working and it's popular. That's what I'm going to do. And to me, that's not the best way to live life. And I don't even think you think that's the best way to live life. Deep down, I do think that people really know that I'm just doing this because I want to be cool or I want to be accepted. And there's a long distance between you being yourself and finally being accepted and kind of praised for you being yourself. Because say you start a business, nobody else is doing what the fuck you're doing. You start here. It's going to take all the way until over here until people start saying, oh, shit, you did your thing. I appreciate what you're doing. You're so fucking great. You made hella fucking money. I respect you. It's a long ways away. However, if you just conform, you get that respect or you get that kind of acceptance. So people aren't willing to go through that kind of tumultuous time in order to figure out and really be okay with being themselves. And that's something that I've noticed today. And that is a huge grievance of mine. I think you hit the nail on the head multiple times. And I want to add to that. Yes. Why do you think that people want to behave and be perceived as something that they're not? Could it be that they are uncomfortable or insecure? Mm. What could it be? I definitely think that people are pussy for a lack of a... Well, there is, there are better words, but I'd like to use that one. I do think people are pussy when it comes to being themselves and wanting to do what the fuck they want to do. That's why I think that's a large part of it. I do think it's a large part of it. And I get it. You're afraid of being judged and ostracized, which is a very, very fair, fair assertion and emotion. However, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. And you also can't know what you're capable of if you know what you if you do not know what you're incapable of. You see, the reason is you don't know where your limits lie. You don't know how far you can push and you also don't know where you fall short. You're missing half of the equation. You're only seeing what you can comfortably do and what you can do decently. You think that Jacob and co became such a renowned watchmaker by not pushing the boundaries. Now, Austin may not necessarily be a fan of Jacob and co. I like certain pieces. A double axis tourbillon is beautiful, irrespective of whatever else is on the watch. If you had never tried to make something and failed, you wouldn't know whether it was possible or impossible. And there's actually an anomaly for this. Excuse me for not remembering what it is. And I'm not even going to take the time to look it up because it'll take me a minute and I want to continue in this podcast without breaking. Before a four minute mile was broken. Was it a four minute mile? Mm -hmm. It was thought that it was impossible to run a four minute mile. However, 
when the first gentleman broke that record, I think it was something like 10 or 13 other runners broke the record within the next couple of right. years because everybody thought it was impossible, but that's not true. It only took one person to prove that it was possible for them to then realize that it was possible. Don't you think it's interesting that Jeff Bezos now has a rocket company similar to SpaceX modeling and competing after Elon Musk? But Elon Musk was the first individual to do it in the manner that he did. When you set the boundary and the borders and your limits and your barriers, they're self-imposed. Generally, you're better than what you think you are, but you're afraid to show it. You're afraid to push it. You have this fear that your character is not enough to be present in the world, that people won't accept you and they will ostracize you. And that's a very real concern. And so fucking what if they do? Who gives a shit? Imagine you're some geeky weirdo who gets married to a lovely lady, has wonderful kids, or has a fucking dog or a cat. I don't give a shit. Or even a fucking parakeet. You're happy? You're successful by your metric? Who gives a damn? So what? Sarah down the street at the cafe doesn't look at you, but you're happy? Who gives a rat's ass and i'm going to be very clear here i think this applies more for women than men mm. because women are very 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 hyper social animals that are very they feel very judged by the environment that they're in so they want to present themselves in a certain light and in a certain manner and i agree it's very important however you can't hyper fixate on social media, the intangible things that aren't really there because then you lose a sense of reality. You think you're an influencer. You think you're so important in the world, but you put your phone down and nobody respects you. The person in front of you thinks you're rude because you sat there and recorded and talked on your phone for 30 minutes while they were trying to read their damn book. And you can't cook. You can't clean. You can swallow, but that's about it. What else can you do? Are you kind? Are you respectable? Are you a member of the community? Do you help other people? Truly, in face, person to person. Can people call upon you? Can they rely on you? Do you have a group of friends of people that you actually care about? Or are you just a persona and a facade that you put on when you're on camera or when you're off camera? I think those are all things and questions that you should be asking yourself. Mm. And we say that they don't know themselves. But deep down, again, I think they do. And I think most people know their shortcomings. And we try to bury those as much as we can, as much as possible. Whatever you're insecure about, most people are like, oh, shit, I'm going to just tuck that away and hope no one ever fucking sees it. I'm going to capitalize and emphasize all my fucking great things, right? Because that way I can be seen as cool. I can be seen as all fucking that, whatever the fuck, right? And the people who do the best, in my opinion, know their shortcomings. And they might even publicize them. Mm -hmm. And they capitalized on them as well. Because, say for instance, right? If I wasn't a numbers guy and I tried to shy away from numbers or just have nothing to do with it as much as possible, anything related to fucking numbers, I tried to get away from. But you get into business, you get into entrepreneurship, things revolve around the numbers. And instead of you trying to figure it out, you say, you know what, I'm going to just let them do its thing. I'm going to just, you know. Hope everything goes well. Your shit is going to fucking sink. However, people who know themselves, people who understand, hey, I'm not that good at this. Smart people would either go like, hey, look, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn at a pace and in such a way that I can be able to increase my knowledge when it comes to numbers and be able to handle this myself. Or I'll be able to delegate. 
And that's how we've been able to operate in business pretty successfully is because we do know our shortcomings and we we know ourselves. We know what we're good at. We know what we're not good at. Jose knows what I'm not good at. I know what he's not good at and I know what he's good at and and he knows what I'm good at, you know, and we've been able to go a lot further in business because of that and because we understand and because we don't shy away from those shortcomings and from those things where we may not be the best at. But most people out there are hiding those things as much as possible. And when you do that, to me, you only get so far. You only get so far in business. You only get so far in school. You only get so far in life because eventually those things will either one, come up and catch you or you'll never achieve the success that you were meant to achieve because that's not something that you've added to your fucking skill set. If you want to be just the best fucking, I don't know, teacher on planet Earth and you wanted to teach every fucking subject, but you knew that you weren't good at fucking math, so you just never taught fucking math, you will never be as great of a teacher as you could be if you didn't fuck or if you did learn fucking math. So now, you know, let's just say 10 subjects as opposed to fucking 11 subjects. You could have been fucking phenomenal if you knew all 11, but you just settled for 10. So you could still still be pretty good, but you may not be great. It's like a basketball player. If you want to perfect your game, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm good at I'm good at dribbling the ball with my right hand, driving in the lane, laying the ball up. I'm good at floaters. I'm good at mid-ranges. And that's about it. You could be such a great player if you learn how to shoot a three. And that's why these players nowadays say like centers, for instance, their games are so much more well-rounded because not only can you operate in the lane, you can operate in the lane, you can operate from the free throw line, and you can shoot a three. Now it turns a, a conversation of you being just okay to you being fucking great because you can do fucking everything. And that's because, one, they knew what they were good at, but they knew what they weren't good at. And they said, hey, look, I know what I'm not good at. Let me get a fucking coach. Let me get a trainer. Let me learn how to do this thing so that I can improve so I can do fucking better. And when you do fucking better, you know what they say? You fucking get paid better. When you play better, they pay better. And I believe Deion Sanders said that. And he said something more, you know, more than just that. But basically, hey, look, if you do better, you play better, you're going to get paid better in whatever the fuck it is that you do. Whenever you realize your shortcomings, whenever you realize who you are, what you're good at, what you're capable of, all the things that you like to do, all the things that you don't like to do, all the unique talents that you have, all the unique talents that you don't fucking have, your fucking discrepancies, your inefficiencies, your fucking just things about yourself that make you you. When you realize that, you can go so much further when you capitalize on it because you having knowledge on a particular subject doesn't mean shit unless you apply it. So you have to apply these things as well. So know yourself, really get to know yourself and capitalize on what you find out about yourself. Don't shy away from it. Don't bury it. Put it on display. Whether people like it or not, shit, that's on them. I tell people this all the fucking time. I'm like, look, I'm going to be me regardless because if you don't like me, that's fine. But if you do like me, I know that you like me for me, not for someone that I'm trying to be or a fad or a trend that I'm trying to be a part of or, you know, something that I'm trying to hide and, and, you know, not tell people about, you know, I'm going to be me regardless. I thought you were a rabid run club. Me? Really? I thought you were actually the one who was a diehard from the day one. Wow. I thought you hosted a run club. You thought I was run club duff, huh? Yeah, I thought you were the run club. Mm. I thought you were running the club. That is interesting. Yeah. Run clubs. Oh, Me. wait. Actually, you don't fake your reality. Wow. And act like something that you're not. Mm. Right. Because a lot of people, I know a lot of people right now acting like they run, acting like they care about running for one. Acting like they got money. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. How are you going to be a broke bitch? 
and walk to your broke ass car with no fucking bumper and then be on the gram at Nobu at a steakhouse in Mexico on the lake acting like you're doing some shit that you ain't. It's like Larry June says, motherfuckers worried about other things when they haven't bought a pair of underwear in three years. You got shit stains and doo-doo stains all over your shit. You got holes in your socks. I have holes in my socks. Yes. But I also have socks that fit me. Nonetheless. He keeps those on purpose. Yes, yes. Fucking step your shit up. Why are you investing in shit for other people to see, but you can't even take care of your own shit? What people don't understand is that when you run this race and you get into credit card debt and you spend mm. outside of your means just to just to impress people or keeping up with the Joneses, whatever you want to call it, it's the dumbest fucking decision you can make, not just financially, but literally. You are ruining your mind and you are ruining your life. You need to get to the point where what you're doing is for you. We like nice luxury watches. Why? Because it's for us. It reminds us the value of our time. It's a token of our appreciation for ourselves and the work that we've put in to craft the men that we are, which is represented and shadowed in the craftsmanship that was put into the pieces of jewelry, essentially. And not only that, it has to do with value. Rolex is Rolex because Rolex became a global currency back in the day. If you were a Navy SEAL or a Marine, you would be given a Rolex standard when you were deployed. And the reason for this is because if you were stranded somewhere overseas, what have you, you could trade your Rolex for cash. It is a global currency. For you to walk anywhere with something that is considered currency, whether it's a gold chain or a watch or actual cash that is globally recognized is a very powerful statement. And to do so with such a high value on your wrist is a whole nother ball game. It's like Larry June says, I bought a house off the wrist. For those of you who don't know, we're talking about houses in California, which generally run you at minimum half a million dollars, which means he was wearing half a million dollars worth of jewelry slash watches on his wrist. What, what, what's the laugh for? But, all I'm saying is invest in the things that truly bring you value and truly bring you joy and truly bring you meaning above all else that honor your creed, your family, and above all else, God, and just live your damn life. Don't be so caught up and worried about what other people think. It's important to be very cognizant and prepared for people's judgment because it is important, especially when you have positions of power but know that there's a lot of things that you can't do. And the, a lot of things are gonna be outside of your power and you can only control so much. So let go of some of that control, start living your damn life and be who you're meant to be. Don't be some fake bullshit persona. Mm. If you're a broke bitch, own it. Be the broke bitch and then become a rich bitch. If you're a bum, get your money up. Mm. Numbers. Numbers. The AM Club Podcast. Signing out. Mike, mic check. The AM Club Podcast.